Greetings everyone, George Taylor here from Untracked Audio. Uh, in the shop as per usual, looking at some equipment as per usual. First of all, <clears throat> I am delighted to announce that I have found the piece of cardboard that tells you where to ask questions. So, if you take a look here, Angela-Gilbert.com. That's a great place to get more information or to ask some questions if you want via email. If you want to ask questions from me, Actually, you may wind up getting me on this one anyway, but if you want to ask specific questions to me, my website is ontractaudio.com and my email address is ontractaudio at rogers.com. Fun story, this has spent... Oh, sorry, I'll hold it still for a minute. There we go, perfect. Found this after months of looking. It was on a clipboard that I used for recording times for my dog's 100 meter dash sprint times because he's involved in a sport called sprinter and it turns out I have a very fast beagle he can my my beagle can run 100 meters in just under eight and a half seconds which is actually Olympic sprinter speed almost um, <clears throat> so he's pretty quick now for a dog he's not quick I mean greyhounds can do the thing in about five seconds but you know what for a beagle with these short stubby little legs eight and a half is not bad Anyhow, <clears throat> enough about beagles and sprinter. This is the NSF, NFS, not for sale, NFS 225 power amplifier. We see it here in three forms. It's, it actually has a level one form, a level two form, and a level three form. There are switches and plugs that help us switch back and forth between those. The NS. <laughs> the NFS Level 1 has half a farad of capacitance, or 500,000 microfarads of capacitance. The Level 2 has 1.5 farads of capacitance, or 1.5 million microfarads of capacitance. The Level 3 <clears throat> currently has 23 farads of capacitance, or 23 million microfarads of capacitance. Now, I say currently because as you can see here from the picture, <clears throat> there is still more room in the parking garage. Um, and there's going to be more capacitance showing up here. Just, I mean, the whole point of this is to do some little bit of research and R&D and find out if there is an upper limit. That's, I mean, we're sort of always trying to find where the limit is and then draw back to where possibly the best... Uh, the best performance values are or the best configurations are so but it's ongoing research into power supplies and capacitance um, I can tell you that this is my second listen and <clears throat> this is a very very different amplifier after being played for a month the, now to be fair only the uh, level one and level two parts of it have been played for a month the level three part <laughs> just arrived and it's temperamental to say the least. I can hear the potential, but for the moment it's uh, it's a work in progress because it needs considerable break in time. Probably probably about two months break in time and at this point in time it's got about a week. So there is potential. What I'm hearing from the level one and the level two additions are a lot more detail, a lot more information, um, a lot more nuance and you know I, I'm careful to say detail because too much detail can also mean a lack of other things but in this case it's not so much the sound is fleshed out it's the sound has become focused and clearer um, <clears throat> there's there's a lot of things to say about this app it's it's super musical um, the extra capacitance now, here's something that most people don't consider. Like, if you're not a musician, if you're not really a musician, it's hard for you to understand that music is a time-critical phenomenon. Like, that note has to be played now. And if it's not played correctly now, even if it's the right note and sort of at the right time, it doesn't sound quite right. And what the extra capacitance is doing is it's allowing the amplifier to perform the correct waveform right now so that it happens when it's supposed to so that it makes more musical sense and you know I, I 
I don't want to lord it over other people that some people who are musicians and people who are not musicians because you can hear these phenomena, but you probably define them in a different way. I define them in immediacy and communication, but other people will define them in impact and dynamics and detail. Um, you know, I, I don't want to get too involved in that quote-unquote hype splitting because, you know, descriptions mean different things to different people. But this, to me now, now that it's broken in A, and now that there's an extra ferret of capacitance on the level two particularly, because the level two sounds very together and is is ready to go. Um, it's it, it, it produces a very dimensional image. It produces a very musical result. It's, in, it's incredibly engaging, and it's fast. Oh, my goodness, is this amplifier quick. Um, it reminds me, actually, of an earlier amplifier made by Angela Gilbert called the NSL, which you may or may not know was comprised of 288 op amps, which gave it tremendous clean speed and clarity. Um, it's interesting that this amplifier in a completely different configuration has much of that same speed and clarity, and it's got a lot to do with the power supply. The power supply is an interesting mix, and I'm not going to get into how to build a power supply because, frankly, to build power supplies like this took three years of <laughs> experimentation and gathering of knowledge and skills. Um, and I'm going to tell you that I'm essentially not really qualified to talk about the power supply, but I do know that there are three steps in, in a power supply that are very important. There's the gathering of the energy, the storage of the energy, and the delivery of the energy. And how the recipe you use to put those three different things together is how you get an amplifier that sounds like this and performs like this. So again, immediacy, uh, gathering energy, storing energy, and delivering energy so that the waveform, like that perfect waveform that you're hoping to hear when your music comes out of the speakers is there in time. Because if it's not there in time, the moment is passed and that energy is being used to do something else. Okay, so gathering, storage, delivery with lightning speed is very important. And this has accomplished that very nicely. Now, I mean, <clears throat> you know, we have paper and oil capacitors here. We have damping factor controllers here, which have become a lot more, these are a lot more critical now that I'm listening to a warmed up amplifier and it really makes a difference which pair of speakers you're listening to as to how you set these things. Um, note to prospective buyers, I'll get in more into the power output in a minute, but this is a 25 watt per channel amplifier, okay? Um, you're not expecting this to drive speakers that are really less than about 91 or 92 dB. I mean, you can do it in a smaller room. It depends, depends on the size of the room. It depends on the music you're listening to and, and, and a whole lot of other factors. But in general terms, you're wanting to use this with speakers that are clearly over a 99, no, sorry, a 90, 90 dB sensitivity level. All right, that's, that's where this thing, that's where music really emerges and grows out of this amplifier. It, it, and, and I do mean that, emerges, emerges and grows. I mean, what, you know, the speakers I have here, these are Fine Audio F18s, they're about 89 or 90 dB. And they are probably the bottom of the zone. You don't want to go, and to be safer, you probably want about 92 dB. But these will work. Um, we're not using them in too big a space, and, and they actually work quite well. Um, <clears throat> if we go to the back, if we come in, zoom in on the amplifier here, here are the places. This is a prototype, obviously. Um, you know, some call it the birthday cake amplifier, other colors, others call it other slightly less uh, complimentary things, but it's a piece of research, so, and it's colorful to be fun. So get over it because it's a great sounding amplifier and it's kind of an important piece of, of audio research. Uh, sorry, not the brand, but audio research for the Angela Gilbert um, brand. So we have a switch here to increase the power supply by 60%. We have a switch here to increase the power supply by another 40%. So if you switch these two to the position they're in now, these are now, um, this is now switched over to being an, an FS-225 
level two. At the back here, we have an umbilical cord that goes down to the parking garage with 23 more capacity with 23 more fares of capacitance right now. So you can, this is, you can basically unplug. I'm not going to do it, but you basically just pull this back and twist it and pull it out. Not going to do that. Okay. I'll let somebody else do that. Here's the, uh, actually plug in for the power supply here. And of course, since somebody called it a birthday cake amplifier, every birthday cake needs a candle. So here you go. There's the candle. It's switchable. We can turn that tube on and off. Now, please note <laughs> that the tube is a decoration to turn on and off. It is not connected to the audio circuit in any way. And what's special about this audio circuit? Well, <clears throat> it's it's a it's a it's a single there's a single output device for each channel in the output section. And it's an interesting concept because theoretically speaking in electrical terms is that there's more there's less control on the output device. And immediately we think of, oh, there's less control. I mean, the sound is, you know, the sound is unstable. They, you know, you can't image, there's no power. No, that's, that's actually not true. In this configuration, what it's contributed to is a lively presentation. And I don't want to use the term holographic because that's so overused, but it does have resemblance to a single end triode um, the, and, and it, it I mean honestly I'm not exactly sure how it's working or why it's working that way but this seems to combine a real interesting mix of a little bit of wallop not a lot of wallop 25 watts a channel a little bit of class A solid state sound and some single end triode sound that's you know, it's 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 not euphonic. It's it's it's, it's lively. It's um, sparkles. Not the right word. I, I I don't know. And and the other thing too is this is what I'm hearing. All right, this is my judgment. This is not defined in stone. I mean, you know, anybody interested in this amplifier should listen to it because it's it's a blast to listen to. But that's kind of my judgment. That's kind of my take on it. So uh, be forewarned. You may not. You may not feel the same about it, but it's a really interesting amplifier. And I mean, not in any way limited by any music that, that I've tried to listen to. I mean, I've, I've listened to disco on it. I've listened to some classic rock. I've listened to symphonic music. Um, and <clears throat> it's been, you know, with, with the right set of speakers, it's, it's been a winner. It's been a winner on everything. So anyway, I think that's all I want to say about it right now. But a very interesting amplifier. Um, Hopefully, well, not hopefully. I'll be. It'll, it will be back after it breaks in a little bit more for some more testing and some more, and maybe we'll do another video then when I've got some more impressions of how the level three version of the NFS two twenty five is working out. But that's it for now. Um, as always, if you have questions, I held up the card at the beginning. Please email. Please call. Uh, it will be back if you want to arrange the time to come and listen to it. That can be done. Um, but for now. Thanks for watching. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, if, you, if, you're, if you're enjoying the channel, why not subscribe to it? Um, only takes a second, and if you're watching anyway, you may as well. Anyway, thank you for watching. Take care. Have a great day.